welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. As you get into adulthood, you learn more and more about how the world works. You soon learn that your network can impact the course of your entire life. You know that if you know that one right person, it can probably get you the right interview for your dream job. Or if you're an entrepreneur, it can probably get you that six-figure, seven-figure deal. Or if you are a content creator, knowing the right person can probably help you to grow your followings in a very short period of time. If any of you watch the Korean drama on Netflix called Celebrities, you would know what I meant in terms of social media followings. You know, I used to think that phrases like your network is your net worth or you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. I used to think that these phrases were like MLM promotional terms (laughs) until I personally learned and observed how by growing my own network that I was able to really grow in terms of my career and my personal growth journey. I don't share much about my day job, but in a short summary, I would describe what I do as a community curator for an entrepreneur network. So I am in the online education industry and I kind of manage a specific community of people. And so through my day job, I had the opportunity to meet a lot of people who are pretty successful in their career. I am friends like in first name basis with seven figure entrepreneurs Some of them are people who knows Jimmy Choo in person or Michelle Yeoh or Jackie Chan or other big names that I can never imagine having a personal relationship with them. But now I can actually say that I know someone who knows of these people. And when you sit on the same table with people of such level, the conversations that you have is pretty different. Of course, they are still human and you still talk about personal experiences, family life, friendships and stuff like that. But I also get to listen to conversations about investing in the next big thing or buying big properties and stuff like that. And when you spend so much time together with them, you learn to expand yourself to where they are at. And that is how I've been able to constantly grow myself in the last few years. And because I've personally experienced it, I know for a fact now that your network is really, really important. But I understand that when you are just getting started, especially if you are in an entirely new industry or environment. Perhaps you moved to a different country or you have switched to a totally different industry than what you were doing before. It can be really tough for you to build your network from scratch. As I started building this podcast, I had to learn to put myself out there. And just a few weeks ago, I actually attended a podcast event to really learn about how this industry works and hopefully to meet new people that can really help me in my podcasting journey. And somehow, as an extrovert who literally organizes events like that and connects people in her day job, I still felt really stressed out and nervous about attending this event because, like I said, If it's a totally new industry, if you are not familiar with it, it can be still really scary. But of course, knowing what I know has helped me a lot in terms of transitioning into this new industry 
or introducing myself into this new industry. So I thought, why not share some tips with some of you who might be struggling in this area? There are many ways in which you can build your network. Like you can start by working on your personal brand or your social media visibility. But today specifically, I really want to just touch on that in-person people skills for when you have to meet new people that you don't know completely. Perhaps when you are attending a networking event or maybe going to a social setting like attending a friend's birthday party and even when you have to go to a new community event like visiting a new church or joining a new gym. I understand that life after pandemic It forces us to hang out with people after we are so used to not hanging out with people. So I really want to help you and share some tips with you on how to be likable and approachable and to really just talk to anyone in such events. The first thing that you need to learn to manage is to actually just physically relax your body when you are at the event. Whenever we are in a new environment, especially in one where we are expected to, you know, go out there and talk to people, which is completely out of our comfort zone, our body is going to automatically get into that fight or flight response and get all tensed up and nervous. Like your heartbeat is going to get faster, your breath is going to get shorter, your stomach is probably going to hurt a little You know, during this event that I just shared with you guys about, I was already feeling nervous. So I kind of had like a mild stomach ache when I was there, which is completely normal. It happens. And then because I was nervous, I drank a few cups of coffee and that made my stomach ache even worse. And I ended up going to the toilet a lot on that day. I know it's kind of TMI, but I just wanted to share what I went through, even as an extrovert, for you to realize that It is normal to feel nervous to the point that your stomach hurts in an event. And so we need to learn to really physically relax our body to avoid such inconvenience of having to go to the bathroom often or to the extent of maybe affecting the conversations that you're going to have with people, right? So these are some simple steps that I personally like to practice to really guide my body back into that parasympathetic state whenever I start to realize that my heartbeat is starting to get faster and I was nervous. So just follow along as I guide you on what to do, okay? Relax your shoulders away from your ears. Unclench your jaw and drop your tongue from the roof of your mouth. Okay, I want you to follow me as I'm guiding you. I'm going to repeat that again, okay? Relax your shoulders away from your ears. Unclench your jaw and drop your tongue from the roof of your mouth. And now, I want you to take a deep breath with me. Let's inhale. And exhale. Let's do it two more times, okay? Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Do you feel more relaxed? I'm pretty confident that you are. Whenever I find myself to be nervous, whether it's going to a networking event or perhaps right before I have to go on stage, I like to just physically do this practice and it helps my body to get back into a more relaxed state so that I am able to think more clearly. And in your case, when you are in a networking event, when you are physically relaxed, you should be able to act more naturally when you are dealing with all these strangers and you can think more sharply about what you need to say. Okay, step number two, 
what you need to do in a networking event is literally just smile. <laughs> smile when you arrive at the location. Smile when you are at the registration and talking to the committee members or the event organizers. Smile when you are looking for an empty seat or asking someone if a seat is taken. Smile when you are asking for your coffee. And just smile, smile, smile. I'm not saying that you have to keep faking your smile to the point that your jaw hurts. But what I mean is whenever you have tiny encounter with people, just give them a very gentle smile. I know that for some people, you have a natural resting bitch face. It is a thing. I know of people who have really severe resting beach face and they are so intimidating before you get to know them. But after talking to them, I realized that they were actually really nice people. They just have the resting beach face. So what I'm trying to teach you is to turn that resting beach face into a resting smiling face, which is something that I was pretty blessed with. I think by default, I just naturally like to smile whenever I come across any people. And I truly think that it is a blessing and I want you to practice it. Just every time you have an encounter with somebody, instead of just giving your natural reaction, just give a mild smile. Just kind of lift your mouth by a little bit on the side. That can already help people to feel that you are more approachable. You if you are really struggling and you want to learn more about how to smile naturally, you can also search up more about the Dushin smile. Okay, Dushin is spelled as D-U-C-H-E-N-N-E, -N -N -E, smile. This is a smile that is studied by the scientists and apparently it's known to be the most natural looking smile which is when you smile not just with your mouth but with your eyes as well. Apparently, you are using a specific muscle on your face. If you are watching the video, you can look at me right now when I smile. I actually smile with my eyes as well, not just with my mouth. Even though it's causing me a lot of early stage wrinkles around my eyes, I do find that because I often smile to people like that, people find me really approachable. In fact, the description that people always give me is that I'm very bubbly and approachable. So yes, step number two is just learn to smile when you talk to people. So now that you are physically relaxed, you've learned to smile to people so that you look more approachable, it's time to start making the small talk. I know that making a small talk might sound really stressful and scary for some of you who might have social anxiety. So what are the things that you can talk about, right? Let's see. What you want is to really find a common topic that you guys can have a conversation about. And if you are in an event, try to find something about the event to talk about since that's what you both already have in common for sure. Perhaps you can start by asking them like, hey, are you here alone? Oh yeah, pro tip, it's easier for you to approach people who are by themselves than people who are already engaging with their friends or other people. So try to approach a person who is by themselves if possible. Ask them, are you here alone? How did you get to know the host? Oh my God, the aircon is so cold here, right? Like start small talk about the event. Find something that you think this person can probably agree with and have a conversation with you. So typically when you start something like that, people are probably going to answer you and talk to you. And then from there on, you can probably move on to something that is a little bit more in-depth. Maybe it's about getting to know that person. So maybe after talking about the air con, you can then say, so what are you doing professionally? Or what do you do for a living? Such are really simple questions that are pretty expected during networking events and people are usually very open to share about themselves. One thing that I do want to say is that for me personally, when it comes to meeting new strangers, one value that I try to really stick to is to be as genuine and real as possible. 
you gotta know this. Whenever you meet people for the first time, they are also meeting you for the first time. So they are probably also unsure about who you are and maybe they are reserved of the idea that a stranger is talking to them. So when you put yourself in their shoes and ask yourself, what would I be thinking of if a stranger is approaching me? You would then be able to be more empathetic. So for myself, I would always wonder like, what is this person's intention? What are they actually trying to do? Are they just trying to be friendly? What is it? So sometimes I might even just be extra upfront, even when they didn't ask for it. I would actually tell them like, by the way, I'm actually just trying to make a new friend here because I'm here by myself and I don't know anyone. If I'm making you uncomfortable, just let me know. Or if I talk too much, just let me know. I don't want to disturb you if you don't feel comfortable. Just laying out the option for you. For me personally, I just am the kind of person that is that prefers to be totally upfront and honest because I don't want to force people to be in a situation where they felt uncomfortable. And I'm also not a fan of like fake pleasantry, like trying to be really nice and overly nice to people to the point that they feel like you're kissing their ass. Of course, you have to be polite to a certain extent, but I'm just not a fan of trying too hard to impress people that I barely even know. Just... Don't be someone that you are not in this event. That is tip number four, which is just to be genuine and real. And tip number five is, take this, be a good listener. Assuming that you are looking for some tips here because you are an introvert and you don't like to do a lot of talking or you just don't know how to talk, or you feel stressed out about talking to people, here's the good news. You don't need to do all the talking. What you want to learn is to master the art of asking good questions and let them talk. People are often very willing to share about what they do or what they are passionate about it if you show them genuine interest and if they feel comfortable to share with you. So just learn to ask the right question and try to catch some of the details that they mention and remember that. Be a good listener. If I talk to someone who talked about her child, maybe, I try to remember that point. If I talk to a guy who is visiting from Singapore and is, say, he is producing a true crime podcast, I, I will remember the keywords. Like, he is from Singapore, he produces true crime shows. And I would always try to link whatever that we're talking um, back to whatever he is doing so that he feels that he is listened and you actually care about what he is doing. Oh, one more big tip is to try to remember names. Somehow, people appreciate it when you remember their name and when you mention it well. Thank you, Wendy. I will see you after this break. Okay, Wendy. When someone says that to me, I actually feel seen. I actually feel appreciated. Just this simple tip. Be a good listener. Remember the details. Remember their names. And you are already acing your networking game. Tip number six. It's to put yourself out there. I know. When you are in a new setup, when you are nervous, it can be very tempting to just hide in a corner and be invisible. Or these days, most people will probably just hide on their smartphones. They pretend to be doing something important on their phones, but they're actually just scrolling on social media to avoid eye contact. Please don't do that. You are there to network and network you shall. Stop hiding. If there is a coffee break, get out there. If there is a section where you have to network with people, don't just sit on your seat and press your phone. Actually, stand up and move to another table and spot that one person who is looking as lost as yourself. So that day, when I went to the podcasting event, right, 
I literally just stood there alone, not knowing anybody. And I honestly feel like an idiot just standing there. But I forced myself to do it. I hide my phone on, in my pocket and I took some coffee, had some snacks and I just stood there by myself. And then I spotted an equally shy and lost guy who was kind of looking at my way. I can tell that he's trying to smile with me and trying to make friends. And so I just smiled back and I asked if he would like to join me for my coffee. And it turns out that he's from a Korean broadcasting company. He was kind of struggling a little bit when he speak in English with me, but he was actually quite fluent. And because I was friendly to him, he actually spotted me again in the next break and he introduced me to all of his cute Korean colleagues, which eventually I just introduced them to some of the nice bars around Kuala Lumpur because it was their last night here. And because I was so friendly and I was talking about myself, they actually asked me for my podcast name and on the spot followed me on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts. And we exchanged name cards as well. They gave me their cards. I don't know how or in what situation would I actually want to contact them, but you never know. It was this small conversations of me just putting myself out there and tried to be friendly because I felt really awkward and nervous. And I reached out to someone who felt the same way. And he introduced me to some of his cute girl friends from Korea. And now, if I ever need to somehow deal with the Korean broadcasting world, I actually have some people that I can contact. So that guy was the second friend that I met in the event. The first person was the girl who sat next to me during the, like the speaker sessions. And it was through all these small conversations with strangers that day that I started getting noticed by more and more people during each break. And I eventually got connected to someone who invited me for drinks with the rest of the local podcasting community that night. I was really lucky that they are really welcoming and they just brought me into their network just like that. I don't think everybody would be as lucky, but at the same time, I would also say that I actually did work for it. I actually paid to join the event. I put myself out there to approach people and be approached and I get to know some of the right people that I need right now. And having said that, I want to share with you tip number seven is that you have to be confident with who you are. One thing that I know for a fact is that I came into this networking event knowing that I don't know a lot about the industry, but I also have a lot of confidence in the work that I do. I was very upfront about my lack of experiences, but I was also very confident to share about the work that I'm doing and introduce myself. And so if I get rejected, I don't let that hurt my pride. I would still see myself for who I am and how that's already enough. I get that not everyone is going to be approachable. There might be some people who are a little bit more beachy or they are just less approachable. And I get that, of course, some people who are more up there than yourself, when you try to talk to them, they might be less approachable because they have to be more careful with the people who are approaching them because they are somehow up there and it's just more risk for themselves when they open up to strangers. So I totally get that. Like I did meet some um, creators with more followers who were kind of like that, but I did not let that affect myself. I just focus on what I want to accomplish in the event. I focus on the people who genuinely want to connect with myself and I move on. Tip number eight is that people remember how you make them feel. Do you want to be remembered as the person who is approachable, charismatic, energetic, smart and knowledgeable, or the person who is just hiding a corner and unapproachable and just too shy or too low self-esteem to be actually talking about themselves or their work? That is your choice. 
And for me personally, I just want people to remember me as that girl who made them feel really comfortable when they talk to. I honestly am not a fan of going to details when it comes to business conversations or skills exchange conversations. Of course, if they did mention like, oh, you are in the training industry. Do you happen to know a speaker who talks about this topic because I'm looking for that? If they actually ask me that, I'll be more than happy to engage in the conversation and help them. But if not, I personally like to touch on more personal topics like maybe introduce more of Malaysian to those who are not local or ask people about their why in doing what they do. And usually when you talk about such topics, it's less so businessy, but more so personal. I like to treat this new network as if I am making new friends in school where there is not too much agenda. I'm just genuinely trying to meet new friends. But if I can help them in their business for a certain network, I would. So don't worry too much about looking smart or knowing anyone in front of these people. You just need to be you because you are your biggest asset and people are always going to remember how you make them feel. And lastly, this is one very important thing to do before you leave, and that is to exchange your socials. As much as I focus a lot in building genuine personal connection on these events, at the end of the day, we also need to remember that all this networking is meant to be a mutually beneficial relationship as well. You can make new friends who you can bring value to the table or can bring value to you. And there is no shame in that. This is something that I actually learned back in my university because I actually had a class that taught me about networking. That's the best part about going to a business school. And that is to follow up and stay in touch with the people that you're connecting with. I feel like we are very lucky that we live in the social media world where we can easily connect with these people through platforms like LinkedIn, Instagram, or WhatsApp. And after you leave the event, within the coming week, you don't need to rush this. Just drop them a simple message telling them like, hey, it was nice talking to you that day. Don't hesitate to let me know if you need any help as I am in XYZ industry. Actually put yourself up on a table for them to remember from the event because likely during an event, they're going to meet a lot of people, but you want to make an impression and you want them to know where they can reach you after the event. You will never know when this one network can actually come in helpful for anybody, either party, sometime in the future. So there you go. That is the nine simple tips on how to be likable to build your network in your 20s. Honestly, I think that this barely scratches the surface on how you can build your network to grow your career. But I wanted to keep it short and applicable for those of you who might be struggling to just even talk to people and make new friends, especially in such networking Um, events where it can be quite intimidating for some of you. If you find this to be useful, please answer my question on Spotify or the comment section on YouTube to tell me what else do you want to learn about building your network in your 20s. Or if you have other topics in mind, you can also fill up the form in my show notes to request for other topics that you'd like for me to cover on my next episode. Make sure to give me a five-star rating and give me a thumbs up for this episode if you enjoy it. Make sure to share it to your socials because that is going to help me. And I hope to see you in my next episode. The sky is really getting dark here, so I was rushing to end this recording. Um, So that's it for now. I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye.